Another feature in MySQL Workbench is named MySQL or Performance Dashboard. So with MySQL Performance Dashboard, you can do a brief overview of uh, what, what's going on in this single MySQL server. So here is client window, and I'll start kind of quick benchmark. By the way, MySQL has a, a small benchmark tool named MySQL Slap. So we can slap MySQL. <laughs> and automatically generating a SQL statement with option dash A, iteration, and concurrent. So now uh, this client, uh, benchmark tool is slapping MySQL. First phase is loading sample data, then uh, uh, firing a lot of select statements. So let's back to the dashboard, what's going on. So we are seeing several cha uh, changes from the previous screen. On the left hand side, there are new connections coming in. So graphic start see some spike, and when server is receiving and start sending some record because it is such a statement, it was a once on select kind of reasons coming in, and uh, roughly 300 selects from this uh, benchmark client. So we can instantly go on the uh, situation of this MySQL server. This screen is a bit wide, so uh, some uh, number of slides is not, not visible well, but you can see clearly on the, on the screen, for sure. And how much uh, table cache is used, table open cache used, or uh, database buffer, uh, data buffer, how much data buffer is used, or uh, really log uh, operations, and so on. We can see this single screen files your work. And if you will learn, you will learn more details uh, from 2.30 p.m. in this room which is in the MySQL performance schema, which tells you every single details of the MySQL server's internal operation to help you to tune MySQL server. But you can get an uh, overview of performance schema, which in MySQL workbench is named performance records. All this information is based on MySQL performance schema. So as in, uh, after my session, then one more session will go and to, from 2.30 p.m you can learn how these data are built with. But with this performance report, you can instantly know which query is doing, uh, which query is executing, executed the most, which queries has a full table scan, so one of the worst operation in database, and how much data transferred, or how long it did take, and so on. You can see from this single screen, MySQL Workbench performance report. Again, good news is, once work with as long as it's the GPL, it's free to use, free to read its view. So, uh, if somebody will find out if you use MySQL, this is the right tool to use. Okay, so this really looks like pretty much a good time to start talking about my main presentation. You missed that. You missed that? SQL cluster. As you may know, MySQL is database, so we just speak SQL statements. That's kind of a basic understanding of all MySQL. But today's MySQL several server feature, MySQL server, MySQL cluster, both database server are also speaks NoSQL. So I'd like to introduce what we can do with uh, MySQL's NoSQL features, as well as what is the advantages of the MySQL or or NoSQL features, especially we focus on MySQL cluster. So MySQL cluster is a different product from regular MySQL server. 
MySQL cluster is a distributed or shared nothing active active database cluster. Based on the technology of MySQL server, but we added more features and changing the behavior of the uh, storage engine of MySQL and built up the MySQL cluster. And now MySQL cluster is used as a one database cluster, two transactional NoSQL. So let me explain what it does mean. One product has two big main features. I guess some of you have, have seen this kind of uh, this diagram uh, released by the uh, 451 group, the research uh, research firm. There are lots of different type of database uh, data management solutions. So this you know split uh, into uh, several different categories. For example, MySQL Server is uh, recognized as a relational and operational database. Operational means more like a OLTD operations. Other famous data management solution nowadays, popular one, can be Hadoop. Hadoop is usually recognized as a NoSQL. Yes, it is one of NoSQL solution. But is Hadoop can be the backend database of the online game. It can be the uh, backend of the uh, real-time data transactional operations. Short answer is no. My Hadoop is really strong in this area. So you may not be able to see, here's Hadoop. Analytics. Hadoop is excellent technology for the processing, analyzing huge amount of data. Not in the terabytes so we are talking about. Petabytes of data, we can analyze data easily with Hadoop. So the MySQL server or Oracle database or any kind of uh, traditional database is quite away from um, analytic layer. Oracle is organized as uh, kind of analytic and operational. I don't know if it's true or not. And this is another story here on the left hand side, truly the non relational story. There are a number of new features, new technologies coming in. But this one more interesting name here. New SQL. New SQL or new SQL is the data management system speaks SQL statement as well as which works as a non-SQL solution. So it's a hybrid model. Not only MySQL, there are some other solutions that are here, but MySQL cluster is recognized as a new SQL and operational solution. So I need to tell you MySQL cluster is not designed for the huge amount of data processing, but it's designed for to be the backend database of the high volume concurrent transactions, such as backend infrastructure of telecommunications network, backend database of the uh, social game. By the way, in Singapore, we have a, a big uh, reference customer on my cluster, which is M1, which is mobile mobile carrier in, in Singapore. They're using user management database. Whenever you use uh, services on top of M1, you're running through MySQL cluster. So those front end uh, trans uh, trans 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 database, that's MySQL clusters over the characteristics. So we are usually think about using SQL database or no SQL database. Then today, first we look for the uh, different types of the, of the uh, no SQL solution. Key value data store. Yeah, searching record by key. So it's more like a, a having a data has some kind of index on top of it. By key, we, we can uh, pick up one record easily. But the all key value data store can do usually is Finding a single record, changing the single record, that's it. There's no relational or uh, no um, more like a really simple data set, no complex data set. Documents. Document is like an unstructured data, and we don't know how how, how, how much uh, data we have against a single record. So we cannot create the definition of the uh, data schema. In that case, uh, documents or may may be used. It's okay when you are having the small sets of data with document storage. But once your data is growing bigger, 
maintaining the document storage is will be nightmare. If you want to know the details, I have a more concrete example, but I don't have it right now. So I can explain at the booth some side. But document storage can be good for the, uh, some small scale application and it really requires a flexible data format. Graph is completely different in aspect of the data, data management. It's not nothing relational, it's not really a document, it's more of uh, not simple data sets. We need to know the relations of the uh, people. So it's a why we use it in the social network for the social graph and so on. So today I'm talking about MySQ cluster, which is not a graph, which is not a document. It can work as a key value data store. So there are several different types of NoSQL, but MySQ cluster can work as a key value data store, which also speaks SQL statements. But why do we need a NoSQL? There are several reasons. Scalability. So our DBMS has a, uh, should have some uh, scalability, but it's not easy to scale. Update. Perform scaling, uh, scaling uh, sorry, the scale of the data changing is always a big challenge. So MySQL cluster is originally designed to be the right scalable database cluster. I'll show you why, uh, how we have done. We also need an absolute performance. Of course, you know, all the, the front-end database must be in high performance all the time. Another thing is HA, high availability for the trend. MySQL cluster does not have any single point of failure. All components in MySQL cluster is minimum duplicated. Ease of use. This is the kind of beauty of the NoSQL, some, some people say, because we don't have, our operation is rather simple. We have a really simple API, and we can change the, the data structure ad hoc. Let's see how we can do with MySQL cluster. But we have to remember, our DBMS is still there. What is the beauty of the uh, my uh, the SQL traditional our DBMS? Why, why do we still need our DBMS in IP world? If no SQL solutions are truly the best solution, but all the all the our DBMS should be dead, but it's still there. Or we are actually MySQL adoption is growing so rapidly nowadays as well. So no, most of no SQL solutions can do the really simple access patterns, but not really complex query, especially joins of the join operation will be available only single solutions. And but, uh, most of our members can do the well-defined schema, which means you are sure what kind of record will be stored, and application is free from understanding data structure first before fetching actual record. Lots of tools are supporting uh, most of our DBMS, including my skills, such as our page we, uh, we show uh, in earlier slides. But one more thing is this. Transaction. A lot of NoSQL for, for, uh, solutions are saying they can do the some transactional operations, but most of them are not really AC for prior transaction. That will be the problem. Some NoSQL solutions are giving a consistency. The giving of consistency makes uh, operation much faster because we don't have to wait for the two operations, uh, two records to be in sync, or, and so on. But uh, from data manager, in our DBMS can be DBA, so who are managing the data, lack of consistency is a kind of nightmare. Even if it's a social game, online game we are building up the system, there are two records, player number one's point, player number two's point. If player number one won against player number two, the points will be transferred from, from num player number two to number one. But if that data storage did not have consistency, point of the player number two can be minus. Player number one, still don't get that point, it's already minor trouble, and today's social game is not quite often linked to the real money as well. So that will be in big, big trouble in the tr uh, business of all those gaming companies as well. And if you don't have any consi consistency or clarity, you'll never be able to step into the real business critical, mission critical applications. So MySQL cluster has a uh, face of the original implementation is built as a uh, 
targeting these kind of characteristics. MySQL cluster does support asynchronous transaction, of course, but it can do the uh, it can reach to the scalability, performance, HA, ease of use, which is available in the lots of NoSQL solutions in the same time. So this hybrid solution, MySQL clusters has a characteristic benefits of the SQL-based LDMS and NoSQL core products. Then let me move on to the more details. So MySQL cluster is designed for the highly scalable write operations. And it doesn't have any single point of failure. By default, it works as an in-memory database, so it has a real-time performance. But let's move on to the or te te technical implementations. From your application, you speak with MySQL server using a SQL statement. When you're adding one record, insert, data will be duplicated into servers named database. In MySQL cluster, this MySQL server does not store any of your application data. Data will be stored in data nodes, and always data duplication happens here. For the scalability, we can add more sets of data nodes and we can scale the size of the data and distribute, distribute workload of access to data. We can add one MySQL server in front or back end in data nodes. We can scale snoop of the entire cluster from our layouts or scale the size of the data of MySQL cluster. MySQL cluster does not have a single point of failure because front end API MySQL server, the two components, data nodes, they're always data is duplicated. So even failure of one data node, data is still exist in another node. Then come to the discussion of flexibility of a schema. Some NoSQL solution has a really flexible data layout. MySQL cluster as a database or even if you're using a NoSQL solution. We can add nodes online without stopping applications. So extending, expanding the uh, platform for the MySQL server for the throughput or data size for data nodes, you don't have to stop any. Or changing schema, right here. We can change data layouts online without interrupting any application process. So, MySQL cluster is not a schema list, but it's really flexible. It does have a really flexible schema. You can change the table definitions online. You want to add more columns, changing the column names, adding the indexes on, on top of the table. Everything is online, real time. Not only the uh, table schema, we can change the server configurations online because all components in MySQL cluster has a minimum uh, two components. Data nodes, minimum two components, stopping one server and changing the server configuration reboot. That server automatically rejoins the cluster. Now we can go to the list of uh, changing configuration of another server as well. And application will not realize things happening uh, behind the scene. So let's check the performance of MySQL cluster. This one is using NoSQL API app, which I haven't explained, explained much yet. But MySQL cluster can reach to the uh, 1.0, uh, sorry, 20 million updates per second with using 30 data nodes. If your system is much smaller, well, still you can reach easily way beyond 1 million updates per second with uh, four data nodes. Newest version of MySQL cluster, this select operation, and it can reach 200 million selects. By uh, the way, this one is through NoSQL API. Let me explain more details. With SQL statement API, it will be like this. So let's move on to the real NoSQL discussion. Let's skip the tools. I don't need tools. There we go. So I already talked about what you, you can access to MySQL cluster using SQL statements. But at the same time, MySQL cluster has a C++ API facing to the data node. From your C++ application, you can read and write records through this NoSQL API, which is key value API. 
and with Java, we have the wrapper for the uh, this uh, NoSQL key value API. From your Java native application, you can access interface named ClusterJ without using any single SQL statements. If your application has key value access, as well as, which requires neither a join operation, like relational operations, use this API named ClusterJPA, which will do the traffic control for you. If your application access it was key value, you will use native C++ API, which has a way less overhead than SQL operations, and get quick, quick response. But some operations are not limited to key, key value. In that case, this traffic controller, uh, cluster JPA, automatically routing to the MySQL server via JVC and run join operations through this SQL API, MySQL server. This is why we use JVC a lot in the enter some enterprise applications. In the web applications, this is more uh, popular and this is catching a lot of attention. Don't look at too many characters here. Let me explain things here. From your application, application is only talking with memcached. Memcached, that's a key value distributed cache. Lots of used in the web application. Maybe some of you are using memcached as well. When an application is talking with memcached, operation is always key value structure. So application is set uh, storing record using a put, uh, put command, a set command against memcached. Then we can automatically persistent data into data. And that cache, cache, information, cache data is automatically duplicated, persistent in data. When you're fetching record from cache, try to get record from cache, if cache was empty, automatically record will be fetched from backend data nodes and in back into your application. So minus, with minus the cluster and main cache team, it will work as per data processes managed by data nodes and KBS. By the way, MySQL in MySQL cluster, transaction is managed in these data nodes, which means your, your inserts, adding records, or changing record, or whatever, is managed as a transactional operation. It's AC compliant transactional or data storage. So, from your application, you're adding record maybe from memcached API, but at the same time, you want to search record through SQL statement. Maybe you're joining different tables. We can do the access, access the same record on the data node through key value API and SQL API trans in transactional operation. So that's the beauty of MySQL Plus. So if your application may be using memcached, you can say this product is a MySQL Plus is transactional key value data store. Oh, by the way, this transactional key value data store, MySQL Plus or Plus MMKHD, speaks SQL statements of MySQL server. So that's why it's so called a hybrid data storage. So that's about one of the characteristics of MySQL cluster. And between clusters, so here is one set of cluster in data center number one, we can have another cluster in data center number two, we can link these two with MySQL, MySQL asynchronous replication function. In that case, uh, that data center number one and data center number two is designed for the disaster recovery configuration. And also, this re replication feature is not limited, to, not limited to from cluster to cluster. We can do the cluster to regular MySQL servers. In that case, we can say this transactional key value data store can replicate data from KBS, key value data store, to our DBMS. So there are lots of no single solutions uh, you know, in the world right now, but not many of those can do the replication from no SQL to SQL our DBMS. But there can be one question. If it's key value, which means usually schemaless, or schemaless or schema free. Some application developers do not want to prepare the uh, schema. Just want, I want to this uh, developer application right away. I don't want to think about schema too much. Or sometimes skill is missing in some application, de uh, some application developers. But if you are managing data, 
sending to different types of our data. Meal, home, person's age, nickname, pound. Storing every single data into one box <coughs> is kind of making mess. It's not easy for us to find out right wing information from, from the right place. And searching for searching performance can be really low. But it's happening a lot. So one way of how MySpeed works are stored data, key and value, everything we do, key column and value column of the, the one table. That's one way. That's a regular key value data store is always doing. Well, that's a schema less or schema free. But uh, if you are managing a, a database, and from a database management point of view, you feel like you want to use proper tables. So in MySQL cluster, we have the one configuration table in the configuration of MemCast plus MySQL cluster. And there's one rule we need to ask the application developers. Please have prefix in your key. Prefix is kind of the category of data. Then in the configuration table, if prefix was this, table named the map zip will be used and count column to be the key and value will be stored in code column of this table. Depending on the uh, prefix, we can control the, the access to the different tables. So that's a kind of a hybrid usage of the key value applica uh, application, uh, sorry, key value application and regular SQL-based <coughs> data management. So that makes it easier for the hybrid access. If you're uh, adding a lot of information, from key value fashion. You can search data still using SQL statement based operation. So we are adding more NoSQL APIs into MySQL cluster. Uh, quite recently, we added a Node.js API, which means from Node.js and JavaScript application, you can directly access to the backend data nodes. I have some proposed calls here, but uh, I'm currently running out of time, so you can check this one later while I'll still be at the booth at the right end of this session. So I can show you more details or in a tutorial how to access to MySQL cluster using Node.js API. So these samples, you didn't see any SQL statements in this example. And from a Still, it is MySQL cluster is ba the basic thick design is on the rest. So we can have the constraints of the foreign key. So even if you are accessing as a NoSQL, this NoSQL, uh, this foreign key relationship can pro uh, prevent the kind of the wrong, wrong, uh, sort of deleting some records by mistake and so on. Foreign key constraints are still valid, even if NoSQL API access. So that's. That's not often available in other NoSQL solutions right now. So again, so MySQL cluster is a shared nothing active active database and transactional KVS, key value data store. This is a hybrid solution. Um, we are seeing a lot of usage in the mobile infrastructure, mobile applications, and social gaming and so on. Now let me explain one more thing in my presentation. So up to here, we talked about MySQL cluster, which uh, again, we have one key version and a commercial version. But another server products in MySQL is named, yes, MySQL server. Newest MySQL server version, major version is version number 5.6. And from MySQL 5.6, not only MySQL cluster, MySQL server also has a NoSQL API embedding MemCacheD inside of MySQL server. This one is not, not designed for the scalability, but it's more for the absolute performance. Insert versus MemCacheD API data add is like nine times faster in this simple data insert operations. Again, how to use? Uh, I also have that examples, but I have your time, so I'm gonna explain. Uh, I'm sure I'll upload this one to the uh, web as well. There are several additional interesting things we are working on. MySQL server will speak HTTP. And you can post JSON data form structure into MySQL and MySQL server reply in JSON format. 
Data store, uh, storage is still table based, but an API, we can use a NoSQL. Even, that's kind of scary for me, I, I, I usually don't recommend to use this. You can write SQL statement in the URL. HTTP colon slash slash cyber address colon 8080, this phone number, slash SQL slash schema name of MySQL slash select bra bra. MySQL server will return results of select in JSON form. If you're interested, you can download it from runstormysql.com and you can uh, play with this one. Another thing we are working, currently working on is JSON SQL function. You can store JSON into MySQL server and search, replace record, obtain some information, removing some components within JSON. There are lots of things we can do, like uh, uh, merging different uh, components, in, uh, documents into one, or uh, more like these are like counting uh, records. These are also available in the MySQL lab library, labs.mysql.com. With these SQL fun uh, these functions, if you store JSON data and you want to replace some components, just use yeah, this one. So, MySQL can be kind of a uh, document database, which is designed for MySQL server right now. Well, it's, MySQL server is not really optimized the document store, but if your document, documents are not so huge, this is a good idea to use MySQL or server still as a uh, document database. It may not show the extreme high performance because MySQL is, is a fully optimized RDBMX. But we are working on this kind of things, including Z, uh, JSON SQL function, previous screen, HTTP plugin. MySQL to be kind of an interesting solution way beyond regular RDBMX. So this is uh, things we are working on as of today. Then uh, quite recently, we announced MySQL Server 5.7 on 6 BML, which is the next major version of MySQL Server, which is, we are working on. So we announced MySQL cluster, uh, uh, actually early this month. Uh, MySQL cluster now became 7.4, version 7.4 is a major version. And MySQL Server, we made it, we made a uh, final uh, milestone release, and in the document at least it says, I'll see, to be soon, release candidate to be soon. So please check both MySQL cluster and the MySQL server. Again, MySQL workbench as well. I believe you love this first and first my operation, cleaning up a SQL statement. Okay, so that's pretty much for the MySQL cluster presentation. Thank you for joining. Thank you. So does anyone have any, any more questions for you, Yusuke? Take it away. Yep. Any, any questions? No? So, Otherwise, then thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Gay. Thank you so much. Right. Wait for the next speaker.